I bet you didn't expect a recruiting talk that involved dirt bikes, did you? Well, we do things a little different around here, something we're proud of. Today's guest is Jordan Mazon. In her pastime at five feet four tall, Jordan rides a 250 pound dirt bike through challenging terrain at speeds upwards of 15 miles per hour. In preparation for this call, I heard Jordan shout, I like discomfort. It made a light bulb go off in my head and I can't wait to explain with her further. She is a naturally charming, badass of a person whose background in social media makes her a light in the darkness of her clients. For those of you new to Help Wanted, I am Marissa Gonzalez and will be filling in for our host, Bryant Chase, today. I am the social media manager for CareerArc and I'm usually the behind the scenes queen, as Bryant says. We have the privilege here in this series of introducing you to some really special helpers. We chat about how their personal lives impact their professional lives and how that circles back to ultimately benefit the recruiting, talent acquisition, and employer brand specialists of the world. Last week, we learned how luxurious restaurant recruiting can be with the support of the proper tools. Taylor Cartmill and all of her 18 years of industry experience authentically spoke to her audience, sharing how her life would be so different if she had access to automated social recruiting posts. Recruiters and restaurant workers, workers have so many things demanding their attention at a moment's notice, and automating social recruiting allows you to get back to those demands without worry. I will be dropping the link to that session in the comments so you can access it later. Please let us know in the comments where you'll be watching from. Today, we speak with Jordan Maison, who's going to share why she loves discomfort. Her perspective helped me shift mine into a higher gear and will allow you to do the same. Jordan, let us know where you're joining from. Yes, hello, happy Monday. I am joining from right outside of the Portland, Oregon area. So the beautiful Pacific Northwest, but it's very rainy today. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I absolutely love your bats, all of your <laughs> Halloween decor. <laughs> Big Halloween fan. <laughs> So you mentioned that you recently had a mental awakening that led to some life changes. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Yeah, absolutely. So just a little bit of background. I have been working in social media for almost 10 years now. So really my entire career has been in social media. And while I love it, I felt like I wasn't really making an impact on people. I was working with a lot of brands and agencies, but I just did not feel like I was really making that impact that I really know that I can make. So I kind of was quiet quitting at my last position, um, kind of ironic since it's kind of making a trend right now. Mm -hmm. And I really just wanted to find something where I felt like I would actually be changing people's lives or making some type of impact through social media. And I was fortunate enough to come across CareerArc where I can use my CSM experience and background kind of tied in with my social media experience and really um, help the TA space. And talent acquisition is really not something I ever thought that I would be in. Um, never really an industry that I had sought out. But now that I found Career Arc and um, I love it and I love that I'm working in talent acquisition. And, you know, it's really important that we kind of take a step back and realizing that um, finding the right career can really set in motion a positive chain of events in a person's life. And it's important that we encourage recruiters to really take a second and think, how cool is it that we can help individuals find the next step in their career? Sometimes we really don't know the actual impact finding the right career can have on any given person. And that's definitely how I feel working in the TA space is I'm helping my clients find these, um, these top talent and really helping them find their new career. Absolutely. Yeah, we love having you here at Career Arc. And we understand that, yeah, social media can be scary, but it's just kind of like something that you have to just continue to like experiment and, and just kind of do. Absolutely. Um, so you've also shared that your type of writing is a little, or I guess kind of really intense. So can you share a little bit about how that really kind of applies to social recruiting? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the type of riding that I do is really just trail riding, right? So it's a lot of bumps, a lot of hill climbs, and it's, it's really intense. So really, I just look at the trail that's right ahead of me. And I like to think about the challenge that's ahead, right? It might be uncomfortable in the beginning, and I love getting uncomfortable. But because of, you know, you're uncomfortable in that moment. But if you really take a second and shift your mindset, to think, what can I accomplish? Like, what will this feel like when I get over this uncomfortableness that's in the current moment, right? And you really have to think, instead of this is going to be where I mess up, this is what I need to do to achieve this task in front of me. And look what I can accomplish just by getting over this little hurdle, right? And really, again, kind of how that ties back into social recruiting is that Yes, it can be uncomfortable at first. And putting yourself in these uncomfortable situations is really something that you should embrace because when you are uncomfortable um, and you're in new and unfamiliar situations, that actually triggers your dopamine. And really, I encourage everyone to build that awareness and that understanding that allows you to see these uncomfortable situations for what they really are, which is an opportunity to grow and learn. So constantly when I'm on the trails, if I am looking right ahead of me and I see how, you know, I could fall right here, right? What's the worst that could happen if I fail right now? I could break, I could break an arm or a leg. That's, that's it though. Like that is honestly the worst. And if we were to tie that back to social recruiting, what is the worst that could happen by doing this, right? By getting uncomfortable with this new space, really, again, you're triggering that dopamine and you can be so successful in the end. If you just push through and persevere through that uncomfortableness, you can see the success that you're honestly hoping to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. I remember you mentioned in our preparation calls for this that you have fallen before and you have broken a bone and that didn't stop you, (laughs) which is amazing. And you got back on your bike and you continue to want to continue learning and overcoming Um, those obstacles. So that's awesome. Yeah. And I, one thing I love too, about what I do is that I have all of this great experience in social media, right? And now I can kind of be that guide for them in this uncomfortableness and help them through these challenging moments, right? When you're out riding on the trails, you really don't have anyone. You're kind of, you know, you have your helmet on, you're kind of by yourself. I'm fortunate enough to have my husband who coaches me So I want to do what he does for my clients and really coach them and guide them through what can be very uncomfortable and challenging and remind them that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's really special that you do that with your husband. And I really think that, again, like embracing uncomfortability and really shifting your mindset is really so important. Yeah, let's get uncomfortable. Let's get weird. (laughs) I <laughs> love that. Um, I, so that also leads me with um, getting comfortable with failing. So could you talk to us about about could you talk to us about how you experience failure and all of that? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the prime example is breaking my arm. Like that was a complete failure writing, right? Like that's not what you ever want to happen. But I had to get over that. I had to adapt and it was ended up being a journey, right? I learned a lot about myself about who I am as a writer. And I really was able to get back up and keep going. And really, the thing with failing is that we all think of failure differently. There's a preconceived notion that failure is really, um, you're setting a goal and you're not achieving it, right? But in all honesty, failure is in the eye of the beholder, because what might be a failure to me might not be a failure to you, right? So really, it's important that we take a step back and we kind of embrace the failure because we learn a lot when we fail. And really, as this kind of relates to, to TA in particular, is that with social recruiting, it's it's OK to fail. It's OK to struggle because in order to succeed, we need to fail along the way. And these failures don't define your progress, right? Right. There's a favorite quote that I always reference, and really, we learn from our failures. We learn more from our failures than from our successes. And not only do we find out what doesn't work so we can adjust our future attempts, we learn about ourselves in the process. So I encourage everyone not only to get uncomfortable, but really to embrace that failure because it's a journey. And you have to get it out there and you have to continue to build on this journey 
and you, you're going to fall. You're going to fail just like I did on my bike, but you get back up, you persevere. And really in the end, again, just embrace that failure because it is a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I know that one thing that also like stood, stood out to me is, so you get out and you're racing or you're not necessarily racing, but you're, you're on the, on the trail and you have your helmet, you have your, what else do you, like you're, you're protecting yourself. And so it's something that you have to also look into. Um, I know that you also mentioned that there's two phases. So phase one would be getting out there and building an understanding, um, an algorithmic approach. So Mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. It kind of goes back into really, it's a journey, right? Especially social recruiting, you're going to start out kind of like I did with dirt biking, you start out, it's uncomfortable, it's weird, you know, your gear might not feel right, like it just doesn't doesn't sit right. That's kind of how social recruiting can be, right? Um, It's uncomfortable, you probably don't know the space, right? I'm a little bit different, given my entire career dedicated to social media. But if you are in particular in TA, social media might not be something that you're fluid in. So if you just take a step back and really think about why is this uncomfortable? What can I do to get better at this task in front of me? Um, You can really start to build on that, right? So you start out maybe at the bottom, you're brand new, let's call them training wheels, right? Dirt bikes, you don't really get training wheels, you kind of just have to go with it, but we'll call it training wheels, you starting out, And really, you can just start to adopt and adapt and really elevate your strategy, right? So you're going to fall down. And that's kind of where the algorithmic approach comes in. Like you have to understand failure is okay. And it's going to happen. And really me with my clients is I want to coach them through that and help them understand that you might see this as failure. But let's look at the ways that this can actually be positive. And let's do kind of a postmortem, right? What did we learn from this failure? What can we do differently next time? And really just reevaluate kind of that strategy, that journey, and think about what we can accomplish if we persevere through these failures, as we call them. Absolutely. And something that I mean, if you let's say you're trying to you're starting out a new series or um, you're posting something a little bit different than your usual norm. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Really? You don't get that much engagement. Exactly. That's what I constantly am telling everyone. I know me, you and Bryant had a pretty lengthy conversation. Um, It's the same when I get on my bike. What's the worst that could happen? I could break a few bones. Okay, is that the worst? But did you die? No, it's fine. (laughs) That's just like with social media. What's the worst that could happen? You put it out there. It doesn't work. Let's just delete it. We learned. Let's persevere through this. It was uncomfortable to fail. Yeah, maybe. But again, that's that's really the beauty of it. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Just really kind of trying things out, Uh, being comfortable with trying different things. And um, there's really no harm in just trying. Um, Another thing that you also mentioned is having a sense of urgency. Um, So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So really, you know, especially when you're on the dirt bike trails, you kind of, it's called when in doubt, throttle out. When you get in a stocky situation, you have to literally just gas it to get through that uncomfortable situation. So if we're urgent in the way that we go about, let's say social recruiting, right? We need to get those candidates in for TA. For me, I need to get over this obstacle when I'm riding. So if we just kind of gas it, right, just when in doubt, throttle it out, get over this hump, we did it. And we can kind of cross that off of our to-do list, which that also triggers dopamine, right? Get a little bit of dopamine high just by kind of crossing these things off of our to-do list. And we just keep continually going down the path of these are the goals that I have in front of me. What can I do to hit them? Again, failing along the way is perfectly fine, but really just kind of being urgent in the way we go about hitting these goals just to ensure that we are continuously experiencing that dopamine high. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think that, I think you mentioned that you started off dirt biking in 2020. Is that? Yeah, it was. It was 2020. It was uh, the first month of the pandemic, actually, is when my husband and I got into it. And that just so happened to be the same month that I uh, shattered my elbow and had to go to the emergency room. So it was a lot of a lot of fun. (laughs) Yeah, I bet so. But look at you, you continued on. And that really is what we're really trying to convey is just really embracing uncomfortability. 
Absolutely. Um, I love getting uncomfortable. So I encourage you once a day, get uncomfortable, do something that might be outside of your normal, because again, you really learn through that uncomfortableness. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, it's officially out of, we're officially out of time. Uh, but thank you, Jordan, so much for sharing your story and joining us today. I will be sharing Jordan's contact information in the chat below. Please reach out to us with any questions, insights, or observations. Next week, we are talking with Vice President of People Operations, Deborah Rowland. Deborah will share her wisdom from years of work as an HR generalist to recruiters to serve as a guiding light. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we hope you have a great day. Thanks, Marissa. Thank you. Bye. Bye.